Hey, it's Rich. And Taylor. With Town Wine and Spirits. We are gonna be talking about sparkling wine, really one of my favorite categories in the store. Uh, the beauty though is we have six here that we're gonna basically go through and break it down for you a little bit because there's a lot of unknown terminology there is. Uh, used in that, especially the first one that people call it champagne, even though champagne is just one sparkling wine mm -hmm. versus many different. Right, absolutely. So people talk about, uh, come in and ask for champagne, when a lot of times they mean Prosecco or Cava or right. a Pet Nat or just, they're basically referring to anything that's sparkling. Yep. Uh, so we're gonna kind of break that down, talk about the different styles um, and the different mm -hmm. ways in which uh, sparkling wine is made. So there is three sort of main ways in which sparkling wine is made. First is the traditional method, uh, method Champagnois, which is gonna be basically you make a finished wine and then you add a secondary dosage, which we'll talk sure. about in a minute, um, that basically creates a fermentation in the bottle, which is where you get the, bo yeah. where you get the bubbles. Um, the second is going to be the Charmant method, which is basically a similar concept, but um, on a much bigger scale where you're taking finished wine and adding in the dosage into a very large tank. Um, and the tank is pressurized and that helps maintain the bubbles in the, um, in the sparkling wine. Correct. And then it's being bottled after. That. Correct. And it's a much cheaper sort of way of doing it. So, yep. you, so you get much more value that way. The third way is going to be sort of the pet nap, which is actually method ancestral, which is um, where the fermentation actually finishes in the bottle. Um, and then so you get the bubbles from that. And it's a sort of a really fun way of making sparkling wine. Excellent. Uh, the other is on the bottom of the label, you probably have seen the word brute, extra brute, mm. um, demi-sec, where basically, well, what does that mean? It really has to do re refer to the sugar levels uh, inside. It's usually called dosage. So a lot of times you might see, uh, sometimes in the back of a bottle, uh, a number. Again, the lower the number, the lower the sugar. Yeah. Uh, so again, extra brute being the lowest and then Brut, and then it goes up from there. Brut is really one of the most popular or common uh, champagnes or sparkling wines. Uh, so to start, uh, I think we're gonna just go traditional here. Yeah. Uh, champ real champagne, real I champagne. Say, from Champagne in France, which is just a little region um, that again, to be actually truly classified, it has to come from that area. Correct. So Piper Heitzig, uh, really one of the very old traditional kind yep. of uh, champagne houses, uh, making a Brut uh, champagne, beautiful orchard fruits. Flavors are very, you know, sort of approachable, yep. easy to drink. Uh, it's fantastic, it's beautiful. There's eight permitted varietals. The three most common are gonna be Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay. Um, and this is using all three of those varietals, which is very common. Yep. Awesome. And it's got nine grams of dosage, I think. That's correct. The uh, Schroffenberger, um, which is what we're actually drinking right now. Absolutely. Course, I hope you guys will be enjoying this with us. Ooh, that smells so it's, nice. It's beautiful wine. <laughs> so this is a rosé, as you can hopefully see in the camera mm. there, there's a slight pinky, a uh, hue to it, so it's, it's got really that salmon color. It's got that like salmony thing going on. The nose is beautiful. It's, it's really quite really nice. The beauty of rosé, you get a little bit more of the red fruits uh, showing through, sure. basically, uh, with that. So again, the beauty here is that this is coming out of now California, uh, Mendocino, so north of uh, San Francisco on the coast. So you get a little bit of that colder uh, air coming off the Pacific, cooling down at night, and it helps really, I think, get these grapes to grow beautifully in right. hot days. We'll so they're using this very similar varietals to Champagne. Yeah. Um, so this is gonna be Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, almost even sort of percentages. Um, they are using about 5% um, actual Pinot Noir juice, uh, which is where you're getting a little bit of the color from. Excellent. And this is beautiful. Right? It's really nice. Yeah. I know this was in your email, so this was, I'm yeah. super happy to be Drinking this right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, I might need a little bit more. I'm we can do that. We can make that happen. Next is going to be sort of the one of the most obvious sparkling wine categories, which is Prosecco. Uh, so Prosecco is going to be an Italian sparkling wine yep. uh, made from mainly Galera, but you can also get Chardonnay in it. This is a blend of Galera and Chardonnay. Um, and the Charmant method allows sort of a more value-oriented sparkling wine. So this is going to be 18 bucks. Um, and it's really approachable, soft, citrus. As I say, I find with Prosecco, typically it's a little bit brighter. Uh, you get a little bit more of that citrus notes coming mm. through, not the traditional kind of orchard fruits. Yeah. This is definitely going into a little bit brighter, livelier, um, where I think we also, we, people enjoy that quite a bit. Sure, and you're gonna get, because of the Charmant method, you're getting um, sort of a softer, easier approach to the bubbles. It's yeah. not as aggressive. You know, maybe like a, a half to a third less than what you're gonna get in Champagne. Um, so it's just really easy drinking, which is why a lot of people, it's become super popular uh, yes. just because it's, it's kind of everyday drinking yeah. sparkling wine. And it's definitely much cheaper than 
uh, or a better oh, price point than, yes. let's say, champagne. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to Cava. Uh, so Cava is very interesting. There is a, a number of regions in Spain that can produce Cava. There's not one specific region spread out across the country. Um, there's very specific rules in which you need to follow to yeah. be called Cava. Um, but Gramona oh. is going to be a producer that's going to be coming from Catalonia and Penedes. Um, and it is very Champagne-esque. Oh, very much so. So the style of Cava is always going to emulate Champagne. So if you're looking for Champagne, but you need something that's a little bit more reasonable, this is 23 bucks. This is where you want to go. Yeah. yeah same to, again, you mentioned the same traditional method, and it's just beautiful. You get that beautiful, I think, body weight. Yeah. Uh, orchard fruits coming across. It's really yeah. There, there, there's a lot more harmony. There's a lot more complexity. There's a lot going on. So this is the, the big difference between here and Champagne is they're using different varietals. Yeah. So this is going to be using Shirello, Macabeo, um, and then sometimes a couple of other varietals. Uh, but those are the two main ones that they're using to make this. Um, and Gramona is an absolute rock star. Yeah. Uh, and they have they have plenty of wines that are priced in the Champagne price range. Uh, they have stuff that's three hundred, four hundred dollars. Um, but this is an absolute value at 23 bucks. Yeah. Now, I guess we're going to head back over to France. Uh, so now, instead of uh, going to Champagne, we're going to go to Loire. Uh, so again, another region inside France. Uh, really well known for their... What? <laughs> it is delicious. It's great. <laughs> um, so again, this is just a, another example of using tradi traditional methods, correct? Yep. Um, but now we're going to Chenin Blanc, or 75% of Chenin Blanc, 25% Chardonnay. Um, again, just a little bit brighter, I think, than typically your... Yeah, I think you're getting really good freshness, brightness, yeah. good acidity. These wines tend to, again, be somewhat, at least some of them can be very Champagne-esque. Yep. This definitely leans in that direction, that direction compared yeah. to, uh, certainly compared to Prosecco. But it's another value-oriented uh, sparkling wine yeah. that just drinks beautiful and is really cool and it's got lots of flavor. So next up is going to be the Pseudonimio, which is going to be a pet nap from Portugal. Uh, from the region of Vino Verde. Uh, Pet Nat is a really interesting category, uh, which has gotten a lot of sort of publicity over the last sort of five, six, seven yeah. years. Uh, so basically what they're doing is they're, they're, they're producing the wine and, and finishing it in the bottle. So you get the little bit of the bubbles and you get a little bit of that sort of that, um, that pétillance from, uh, from the fermentation finishing in the bottle. So one of the things with Pet Naps, typically this is this one's Yo, very, very clear, yeah. uh, but a lot of times, again, the beauty is it's unfiltered, so you get a lot more of that body weight, a little bit more mm. of that interesting character yeah. because of the fact that they're not filtering it, so you get a little bit more body. So weight. they tend to be they tend to be a little bit more sort of um, uh, sort of rustic, a little yeah. bit more raw. You're getting a little bit, so it's very natural way of making wine. Uh, like the this way of making sparkling wine is 500 years old, and they're also biodynamic, if I'm correct, or at least they're going that yes. direction. If I remember the yeah. like, uh, from here, so. Yes, if you are looking for that, you know, organic or organic esque. Yeah, this is this is this the way is to go. It. Yeah. And what's what's really interesting is that is that there's going to be there always going to be bottle variation yeah. uh, uh, because the, because of fermentation and the and the bubbles happen in the bottle when it's finishing. Uh, there's no way to control the to have the precision yep. and control like you're going to have in champagne. So that's a little added fun. So every time it's going to be ever so slightly different. Yeah. Um, it's got, they, they've gotten really hot. People are really excited to buy them. Uh, it's like drinking, it, it's drinking really fun sparkling mm -hmm. wine. As we continue to finish our class, come on in store, ask us questions. Yeah. See what it is, because I feel that uh, sparkling wine as a whole is slightly underrated because you should be drinking this all year round. Absolutely. I love it. We talk about this, I think, all the time, you and I especially, because yeah. we both really love sparkling wine. But uh, it is, of course, great for celebrations, but I think it really could be for any Friday night as well. So. Well, and, 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 and to even further that point is they're amazing food wines. They work really, really, oh. really, really well with food. They're a lot of fun, and people just need to experiment yeah. more and drink more and uh, have a lot of fun with them. Well, come on in and ask questions. We'll definitely help you pick mm -hmm. out the right bottle for you. Yeah. And uh, can't wait to see you next. All right. See you soon. Cheers.